Hello and welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fina Leptin. Health Focus is a 15-minute discussion program bringing you in-depth knowledge on different health issues. Today we have with us the Medical Surveillance Officer, Dr. Gemma Sherry, who will provide us with information on the CAP survey. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Great. Right now, the world is dealing um, with the pandemic of COVID-19. And of course, for St. Lucia, one of the ways of responding um, to this pandemic is actually the use of the CAP survey. Can you tell us what is the CAP survey and why the need to undertake this survey? The CAP survey is basically a knowledge, attitudes and practices survey. When we speak about knowledge, we want to know what it is that people know. In terms of attitudes, what it is that they believe, what their thoughts are, and practices, what is it that they do with the knowledge that they have gained thus far since the COVID epidemic began. So in March, on March 10th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. Since then, the ministry has been undertaking a number of activities. We recorded our first confirmed case in March and as a result of that, government has had to take a number of measures and most of these measures have actually affected our daily lives as people living in the country. Now, for these measures to actually work, people need to adhere to these measures. So adherence, a lot of it is about gaining knowledge using that knowledge to be able to do things and for persons to understand what is happening. So the CAP survey basically, it seeks to assess persons' knowledge as it pertains to COVID-19. Knowing what people think about COVID-19, the level of knowledge, it would help us in terms of our public health, our public education campaign. So. The Bureau of Health and other agencies have been involved in a number of public health campaigns. So, for example, you would have seen me um, showing the public how to put on a surgical mask. There would have been um, messages about hand washing. There would have been messages about social distancing. There would have been messages in English and in Creole as it pertains to curfews and other measures. So we basically want to know if all of that information that has been put out there if people are really, if, or if it's rather really getting to the persons that it's supposed to get to, and what people are doing with that information that they've been getting. It would also help us to assess thus far our public health response because there are general questions that would ask certain questions and it would give us responses as to what people think in terms of the response that we've undertaken and whether or not they think that we are capable of winning this war against um, COVID-19. And it also provides us with some baseline information as it regards to knowledge, attitudes and practices of persons living in St. Lucia during this period of um, COVID-19 outbreak. Okay, and you mentioned in terms of the um, health efforts, mm -hmm. but um, what benefit would you say it would have for the average St. Lucia? Okay. Participating in the survey has no direct benefits for the persons who participate in the, in the survey. But what, it, what the benefit is for the country as a whole. So for example, we can use that information to see, to know what information is reaching persons, what persons know as it pertains to COVID-19, what people think, right, in terms of their attitudes, what their thoughts, what their beliefs are, and what their practices are. And so that can help us strengthen the current response. And of course, it would help us to safeguard um, persons living in St. Lucia as it regards COVID-19. Okay. And what is the target audience for this survey? Okay. So basically, we are targeting persons 18 years and older. Um, the, the survey is actually a web-based survey. So given what is happening and all the social distancing measures, etc., that have been put in place, um, we did not find it fitting to go on the ground and actually go to people's homes and interview them. Mm -hmm. So we felt that a web-based survey would have been the best um, way to collect the information. So persons are going to get an invitation asking them to participate in the survey. And so the 
um, Flo and Digicel have agreed to partner with us to send out those text messages asking persons who use their services to participate in the survey. We would also be posting the link on Facebook so you can look at the GIS website, the Bureau of Health website. We would also be using WhatsApp and other social media platforms to actually put out these invitations asking persons to participate. Now participating, it, it, it's at your own will. You, you're not forced to participate in the survey. But we would prefer if persons who receive the invitation would participate in the survey because the more information and the, the more persons who participate is more information we have and it would help us to make um, decisions that would better help us in terms of um, safety measures and control where COVID-19 is concerned. Wonderful. Well, we are due for a break, so we'll definitely continue this discussion. We'll be back in a moment. Good day everyone. I am Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. In the management of COVID-19, there are actions that must be taken if you begin to feel unwell. First, you must monitor your symptoms. If you develop respiratory symptoms such as fever, cough, runny nose, sneezing, sore throat, call one of the clinical support telephone numbers for advice. If the medical care provider tells you that the symptoms are mild, please follow the recommended steps of care. If your symptoms are moderate to severe, you will be advised to go to the respiratory clinic closest to you. Wear a face mask when leaving the house, especially if you are coughing or sneezing. This will prevent others from getting the infection. We recommend regular hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer when away from home. Also, avoid direct contact with others and also to reduce touching other surfaces. When going to the medical facility, please go directly to the medical provider. Do not sit among the other patients. Testing and treatment and care to persons with COVID-19 is free of charge. Work with the Ministry of Health and Wellness as we reduce the impact of COVID-19 on you and your families. For further information, please contact the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5347, 468-5349 or 468-5350. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with Dr. Gemma Sherry on the CAP survey. Before we took the break, you were discussing in terms of the survey and um, you touched a little bit on the structure. Can you tell us what exactly is the structure and how long will it take for someone to actually complete the survey? Okay, the, the survey takes 10 minutes, about 10 minutes to be completed. It is not um, a very long survey. So it's broken up into a demographic section where we're basically asking you information about your age, your age, your community, you come from, etc. Then we go into the knowledge section of it. So we want to know what it is that you know about COVID-19. Then there's an attitudes um, section. Like I said, it's basically for us to know what you believe, what your thoughts are as it pertains to certain things regarding COVID-19. And there's a practices um, section where we want to know what it is that persons have been practicing um, since the start of the epidemic because all this information is out there. What are people doing differently that they were not doing before? And of course, you have a general um, section which contains, I think, three questions. And it's just um, for you to tell us um, if you think we could win the war against COVID-19, just general questions. Great. And um, when will the survey commence and for how long? Okay. The survey is actually due to commence on Monday, the 29th of June, and it will run for a two-week period. Great. And um, for, some, for some persons, the concern might be of confidentiality. Um, can you speak on that as it relates to the survey? Okay. So the survey... We're not asking you any personal information. For, um, for example, we're not asking you for name. We're not asking for religion or anything like that. What we are asking for is your age, your marital status, your level of education, etc. That information will be kept confidential. So you, if you take part in the survey, nobody has to know that this response, for example, if you, Funnel, take part in the survey, nobody has to know that this response came from Funnel. Mm -hmm. What we are going to do, we are going to put it all together at the end and we are going to make a summary. That information is also going to be kept 
on computers that are password protected. So there's no way that anybody will say, oh, Jim, Jack, or Joan was the one who gave okay. us the information. So there's no need for persons to feel afraid that um, somebody's going to know that it was me who gave the response. Great. And um, you mentioned in terms of the information that we received from the survey, um, what part will it actually play in the public health efforts in terms of our response to COVID-19? Okay, so it can actually help to strengthen our public health education campaign. Um, so for example, um, the, the adverts on masks, etc. are out there. So if people, depend on the responses they give, we would actually know why persons do um, wear their mask, why persons don't do certain things, and we can now tailor um, the messages. Um, it would also help us in terms of policy decisions that would be taken. And we could also find out, for example, if um, some of the information is not reaching um, the population as it's supposed to, we can actually now go back and look at revisit um, these messages that we have there and we can now tailor them to the needs of the public. Okay, so we can definitely say that it will strengthen the health communication and social engagement. Certainly it will. Wonderful. And um, as it relates to um, the survey, would it lend to documenting St. Lucia's experience um, in managing COVID-19? Oh, certainly it will because um, we've had a number of outbreaks and we've not documented. So we had chikungunya, we had Zika, and you have lots of countries documenting um, the experiences. And thus far, if you look at news items, international news items, you would see that St. Lucia has been getting lots of praise mm -hmm. um, for the way it has handled the outbreak so far. So this would just be one other step in documenting um, part of our response as it um, relates to COVID-19. Okay. So it actually puts us there again on the map. Great. And what message um, would you like to leave um, for St. Lucians as it relates to this survey? Okay. I would like to encourage St. Lucians to participate in the survey because here's your chance to actually play a part in what is happening as it relates to COVID-19 and the measures that we put in place. Here's your chance to be part of history. And I would like to encourage St. Lucians, please be as truthful as possible because at the end of the day, we're not just asking you the information because we want to know. The information is going to help in terms of what measures we take, the policy decisions, and they are all meant at protecting each and every one of us in terms of um, COVID-19. Okay. And again, we want to remind St. Lucians that the survey will commence um, on June 29th and it will be for a two-week long period and it's also an online um, survey. And if they have any um, problems, they could always reach out um, to the Ministry of Health and they can ask for me and I would be more than willing to address their concerns. Wonderful. Well, we have actually come to the end of the program for today. I want to thank you so much for providing us with this information on the CAP survey. Thank, Thank you. you. You have been watching Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fennel Neptune. On behalf of the entire production team, thanks for watching. Until next time.